Hey guys, so I got a problem. I need to do three colors on a piece of acrylic. And uh, I've done two before. That's easy. You just put some mask on there, cut it, spray paint it, pull the mask off, then spray paint it. Anyway, that's easy. This is a little more complicated. So we're going to talk about how I'm going to do. try this and we're going to see what happens because I don't know. But this is what we're going to make up here. This is a piece for a little wand that I've got to make for a commission. And uh, we need red along this outside edge. We need white in these little petals and stuff in here, and then the inside is going to be pink. So to do that, we've it gets kind of complicated because we need three colors. So this is what the idea is. I got a sheet of acrylic. It's white, and we spray painted it pink. So we took this stuff. This is just the Rust-Oleum Ultra Cover stuff. Walmart, seriously, just Walmart. <clears throat> it's really good uh, for acrylics and stuff because it sticks, and we don't have much of an issue. It's, uh, this has been on here a couple days, it's not coming off, and then once you clear coat it, I don't have any issues with it coming off, so it, it bonds to plastic really good. So, then we put a mask on here, and this is gonna get, this is gonna be our paint mask. This is just transfer tape, it's usually what I use when I gotta do a full sheet like this, so I don't have overlaps and gaps. So I just got the full sheet on here, usually works pretty good. Again, this might not work, we'll see, but I've done it in the past and haven't had any issues. Then, what we're gonna do is cut it out. So we're going to cut the blue line here, and then the black line here will we'll, we'll do a vector, what's called a vector cut. So I'm going to just cut a little bit into it, and then I can pull that mask off where those areas are, and then hit it with the red paint. So we're going to paint the back side red, and we're going to paint the front side red in these areas here. Then, that comes the tricky part. We're going to take this, we're going to put it back in here, after we've cut it. That's hard, because <laughs> the laser doesn't remember where it was. And our laser doesn't have fencing and all that fancy equipment that makes it easy to do this. So I've got some ideas. We'll talk about those later. But once we get back in the laser after we paint it red, we'll then go in and etch out these little spaces here. And when we etch through the paint, we should get the white color underneath. Well, we will get the white color because I've done that before. But that's the idea. And then once we're done, it should look really crisp, really clean lines. Everything should look nice. So that's the plan. I don't know. We'll see what happens. So... Hopefully this works out. So, toss this in the laser.
this is the end result here. And as you can see, it came out really good. It's uh, got a little bit of an issue, and that's right up in here. And that's, that's what I would caution with this, is that it's really, really, really hard to get everything back into the system and re-zeroed to be perfect. So, for instance, with this one, this is the only place where these two meet. Also, my laser has a thing, so there's like a little bit of an extra bobble there. I don't know. It's a thing my laser does. It's, I, I don't know. But I did get a little extra etch in here, so there's a little line there. But the, uh, anyway, the overall thing is that getting it back in, the exact placement of these elements here doesn't matter. Because if this is off ever so slightly here, you won't notice. However, this one right in here, and we'll get some close-up pictures of this, Every, right in here, you can see there's just a little bit of paint gap, and we cut into that red a little bit. And that's part of the problem with doing this kind of stuff, that, you know, it's really never going to get it back in there right. Uh, we could try doing a waste board, so I would take, like, some MDF, and I'd have to screw that MDF to my board, to my honeycomb. Then I'd have to cut it, and I'd have to experiment. I know my laser cut kerf is somewhere in the neighborhood of 0.13, but it depends on the material, and then I'd have to cut it and experiment until I got it to or almost press fit in there. And then what we would do is cut the outline, remove the center piece, then reinsert this piece into it. But because I got it out so clean and crisp when it came out that nothing moved, I thought I could get it in pretty close. And we did, but it wasn't perfect. But we'll go in and we'll touch that up a little bit. Should notice it. <laughs> but then I got the rest of this all done. We're gonna paint this up the rest of the way and get it all ready to go. These are just some 3D printed parts, and I'm really happy with how this one's coming out. It's looking spectacular. Uh, if you're not familiar with the character, it's uh, Sakura from Fire Emblem. I don't know. Somebody reached out to us, wanted to have this one done, so this is what we're doing. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, this was fun. Hope you enjoyed the, the journey. Hope you learned something, and I'm glad I don't have to do it again. That for sure. So, anyway. Stick around here for more kind of stuff like this. We're going to keep doing these kind of videos and experimenting and doing some random stuff, whatever I come up with. You know, we also do that Twitch thing. You can come hang out with me, watch me piddle fart around in Fusion 360, and hopefully my computer stops crashing during the middle of streams. That's been very distressing. But anyway, hope you all had fun. Hope you all learned something. Go make something awesome. I'll see you next time. Thank you.